Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie. And in this video, I'm going to look at the weekend of September the 7th and 8th, 2024. So what do you want me to say? Do you want me to say that it's going to be a great weekend, everything's going to be fine and there's nothing to worry about? And that's probably the case. But still, there is an opposition aspect between the Sun and Saturn this weekend. And in terms of heliocentric astrology, we can describe that as an Earth-Saturn conjunction. And in many respects, it might dominate the weekend. And this is something I want to look at. And you know, all things being equal, Sun opposition, Saturns can be quite difficult. They can present roadblocks, uh, frustrations, things might not work out perhaps as we expect. And I'm not saying it's going to affect us as individuals, but it might affect the world around us. And this is something that I need to look at. And I also want to look at people who have Sun opposition Saturn in their horoscopes. Now, there are some famous people, for example, Hans Christian Andersen had Sun opposition Saturn, uh, the author of The Ugly Duckling and The Mermaid, The Little Mermaid, whatever that, whatever the title is. And Brigitte Macron, she has Sun opposition Saturn. So there are a few people who've got this aspect. Now I will be looking at what it might mean in those individual horoscopes. But first of all, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for the weekend. Now, just a reminder that uh, I would be very grateful if you were to like this video, if indeed you find it of interest or useful or you find it useful. And uh, if you're not subscribed, I would be really grateful if you were to subscribe because apparently it does make a big difference to the channel. So let's uh, see what's happening uh, this weekend. So here's a picture. Now, starting off with the moon. By the way, this chart is set for the middle of the weekend, um, midnight on September the 8th, 2024. So looking at the moon, the moon in the middle of a weekend is at 11 Scorpio. I mean, of course, that's 11 Scorpio from the perspective of New York, but I don't think it matters too much. So we've got moon in Scorpio for most of a weekend. In fact, the moon moves into Scorpio at what time? 6.18 in the morning on Saturday in London. So that's even earlier in the morning if you're in New York and it's actually Friday evening if you're in the West Coast, California, for example. So for most of us, it's going to be a real moon in Scorpio weekend. Now, if you're in um, Australia or New Zealand, then the moon might not move into Scorpio until late afternoon, early evening on Saturday. But I think... We can say in general that there is indeed a moon in Scorpio weekend. So the moon in Scorpio is quite an emotional placement. It, the focus is on our feelings and perhaps we're going to relate to the world through our feelings and perhaps we're going to be more sensitive than usual. Remembering that Mars, of course, is now in Cancer. So we now have two personal planets in water sign. So we've got Moon in Scorpio and Mars in Cancer. So things are actually more emotional than they have been for some time. You know, the, the people do want to express themselves through their feelings. And if you're an emotional person, particularly if you're one of the water signs, you know, that would be, you know, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, it may be relatively easy for you because you're comfortable with whatever is going on on around you. But the moon in Scorpio, early Scorpio, is going to be in the via combustor. So certainly through Saturday, through Saturday for all of us, the moon is get, will be in the via combustor. That 
part of the sky between 15 Libra and 15 Scorpio. And so this can be a time when just anything can happen, when we make careful plans, but they just don't quite work out. You know, maybe someone's late, someone forgets something, or there's just a misadventure. Now, it doesn't mean to say that the plans are going to be ruined. It just means that you do have to be flexible. So if one thing goes wrong, make sure that you can make an adjustment so that uh, in the end everything turns out to be okay. Now, the main aspect of the weekend, if you like, the sort of headline aspect probably, is Sun opposition Saturn. And that's why I put a picture of a planet Saturn on the thumbnail. So Sun opposition Saturn, same thing as Earth conjunct Saturn. And so this can be a somewhat difficult aspect. I mean, Saturn is a malefic. And so it, it can have a sort of a a blocking influence. You know, we might want to express ourselves in a particular way. Uh, we might want to tell tell the world about ourselves, but somehow no one's listening, or things are more difficult than we'd expected, and uh, it can be hard work. So we should not expect things to be easy this weekend. And you know, if we have got particular ambitions that we think we can achieve this weekend, then we shouldn't necessarily expect everything to work to plan, not least because the moon is in a via combustor. But even even then, there just might be resistance. And it, it might be that someone needs to be persuaded or that we need to lengthen our time scales you know we might think oh we can f finish everything by sunday not necessarily it may take into next week we may even find that some of our plans which we we, we thought we were going to be able to put into action may just not be practical and that is possible so the sun opposition saturn can work in two ways in one sense we could get some advice, some serious advice that we're not being realistic. Or we might be realistic, but we have to deal with an obstacle. And that might be how we can conceive of the sun opposition Saturn. Now, the sun is on a fixed star called Mizar. Now, Mizar, I looked in uh, Robeson, Robeson's fixed stars and constellations. I couldn't find it. Maybe it is in there, but Robeson didn't seem to mention Mizar. On the other hand, uh, Reinhold Eberton and Hoffman in their book Fixed Stars and Their Interpretation, uh, they do mention Mizar. And this is what they say about Mizar. And, you know, it's, it's important to look at this fixed star because we already know that the sun is opposition Saturn. So, you know, this kind of gives us uh, perhaps more information about how this opposition is going to work out. Now, this is when you listen to this interpretation, it's going to be more on a sort of a collective level, I think. So, so here, here's what he says. It's uh, he, he says it's 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 Zeta Ursi Majoris. Now, one that is a reminder. So it's Ursa, Ursa yeah, that's, it's in the Great Bear, I suppose. And it's not a particularly bright star. So generally speaking, the brighter the star, the more influential it's going to be. So you know, this is a second magnitude star. It's not, it's not necessarily super important, but, you know, I thought I'd talk about it anyway. And Ebertin says that it is the tail of the great bar, the tail of the great bear and supposedly mizar portends a mars nature the reputation of mizar if it is in maximal position in a mundane map is that of being connected with fires of catastrophic extent and mass calamities in personal charts, Mizar is not helpful if conjunct with bad planets. Um, but uh, 
he goes on to say that, you know, it is all things being equal, a negative influence, perhaps connected with catastrophes. So I think you should see that in a mundane way. In other words, I'm not really talking about individuals. It's perhaps talking about what is happening down here on planet Earth. But it might also say something about our attitudes and what we think about the world. And when we look at the world, it may look perhaps rather catastrophic. And he does give an example of a sun conjunct Mizar event. And he says, the blood wedding of the 23rd and 24th of August 1572, when throughout France, nearly 20,000 Huguenots were massacred, is very much in character, character with sun conjunct Mizar. In Paris alone, 2,000 people were murdered. Now, you know, I'm sure it's not going to be like that. I don't think you need to worry about being murdered in your bed or anything like that. It's just, uh, it's just about the world we're living in, I suppose. And I should emphasize that Mizar is not a super important fixed star. And you know, maybe we needn't bother with it. I'm not really a fixed star kind of person. You know, I look at about you know, five or six fixed stars I take very seriously. I mean, I know that there are people who do whole horoscope interpretations on the basis of fixed stars, and I look at all of them in massive detail, but that's not me. So, and I'm certainly not trying to scare you with what I say about sun conjunct Mizar. Looking at other things going on today, Mercury is, there's Mercury is at 28 Leo. Remember, Mercury is now really close to leaving Leo. But as it leaves Leo, it makes a square to Uranus. So Mercury square Uranus could be about mental stimulation, us responding to what is happening around us, and perhaps over responding. But there may also be a certain sense of excitement with Mercury square Uranus. People wanting action, wanting mental stimulation, saying what's on, saying what's on their mind without really thinking about it. Well, they are thinking about it, but their thoughts are so exciting, so excited and so fast, they, they don't really have much time for, for contemplation. And I suppose with Mercury Square Uranus, it might be that there's just a certain sense of agitation. And at the same time, the sun is sesquiquadrate Pluto, so sun says we quadrate Pluto, sun in uh, sun in Virgo says we quadrate Pluto, uh, says we quadrate Pluto. That was really at the beginning of a weekend, sun says we quadrate Pluto. But it it does emphasize that the sun is under a bit of pressure at the moment. And sun says we quadrate Pluto can be about power struggles, feeling that uh, it's either us or them but we have to be a winner because if we're not a winner we might be a loser so there could be a sense of a zero-sum game with with sun uh sesquiquadrate pluto and then on a saturday we've got venus venus sesquiquadrate uranus so venus sesquiquadrate uranus that can be i suppose exciting i mean venus is a planet of relationships so there might be sudden events in relationships for better or for worse. I think that you know we might have high standards in terms of other people. We want excitement from other people. The Venus is also the planet of money, so I suppose you know be careful with money. Maybe when if you look at financial matters, you'll see something surprising. It might be a little bit disturbing at least at first sight, but when you look at it again and you analyze it, it probably isn't going to be so bad. Now, turning to the heliocentric picture, so heliocentrically, you know, I've just mentioned the fact that there is Sun opposition Saturn. So, from a heliocentric view, that Sun opposition Saturn becomes an Earth conjuncts Earth conjunct Saturn. So there we ha have it heliocentrically, Earth conjunct Saturn and. That's just telling us something we already knew. But I somehow think Earth conjunct Saturn is more descriptive than Sun opposition Saturn. Yeah, Earth conjunct Saturn, it tells us about the planet Earth and what the planet Earth is experiencing. And if it's close to Saturn from the Sun's perspective, then things you know, might be a little bit uh, serious. 
Uh, we can't take things for granted. And this conjunction between Earth and Saturn is sesquiquadrate Pluto. Now that aspect, Earth conjunct Saturn, sesqu sorry, not sesquiquadrate, I mean semi-square, 40, 45 degrees apart from Pluto. That, that could actually be quite a serious aspect. Saturn's, Saturn Pluto is about being under pressure. It can be a bit of a pressure cooker and it just might feel that just something has to give. And there's poor Earth now involved in this configuration, conjunct Saturn. So yeah, it's, it is a time of pressure and it might feel that something has to give. And if, if not in our lives, then perhaps in, in the world, you know, what what kind of events are we going to experience this weekend? And yeah, I suppose that's what I mean by in this by you know, my view that it may be a somewhat difficult weekend. That people are going to be under stress, so that's uh, that's the general atmosphere. But again, I must emphasise it. It needn't impact us uh, personally. Now, another aspect which is perhaps more optimistic is the fact that this weekend there is a conjunction between Mercury and Jupiter, heliocentrically of course, in Gemini. And this Mercury-Jupiter conjunction perhaps allows us to see things in a positive sense. You know, we can see the bright side. We might have to look for the bright side, but we can find it. And Perhaps it's all about what we say. So Mercury conjunct Jupiter can be about saying things to cheer people up, being optimistic. And if we're optimistic, we may be able to turn the situation round. I mean, I've suggested that it might be a somewhat difficult weekend in some areas, but maybe there's a possibility that we can take advantage of the situation. You know, where there's a problem, there's always someone to take advantage of it. If people are under pressure, and um, then the people that can keep their cool are the ones who can benefit. So Mercury-Jupiter conjunction reminds us that we've got to keep positive, be positive, and say positive things, because that's what people want to hear. And so we can be perhaps the antidote, perhaps, to an overall environment of pessimism. So let's uh, now look at... The 12 signs. So these are my forecasts for the 12 signs for the weekend of September the 7th and 8th, 2024. Aries. Aries, things are getting a little more serious. I think you can feel it. The levity has perhaps gone. And you now realise that you can't perhaps be your normal self and that you have to try to understand what is happening. And that might mean you just have to slow things down and somehow tune into your own feelings. You know, your feelings are more powerful than usual. And, you know, Part of the reason for that is that Mars has recently moved into Cancer. So Mars is your ruler. So when Mars is in Cancer, you know, this is a time when you perhaps are more emotional than usual. You're more aware of other people's sensitivities and perhaps also a little more cautious than usual. You know, I know that Aries has a reputation for, you know, Aries rushes in where angels fear to tread and all that kind of stuff. But I think you're not quite as impulsive as usual. You do realise that if you are impulsive, things can go wrong. And I think with Mars in Cancer, you're, you know, you're perhaps more defensive than usual. You know, there are things that you need to protect. And with the moon moving into Scorpio... That is a further reminder of the need for protection. Now, that moon is maybe not making an exact trine to Mars, but there is a trine relationship between moon in Scorpio and Mars in Cancer because, you know, two water signs. And I think that is probably quite useful. 
So if you understand the challenges of the times and you are prepared to be cautious and look at, look after your own interests and not to stick your neck out if, if unless it's really necessary, then I think in many respects you will be able to benefit and in fact make yourself stronger you know it is a time perhaps when Aries can make themselves feel more comfortable and part of that is because you understand what makes you feel uncomfortable so in terms of security it can actually be quite a good weekend and you know overall I don't think that there's anything you actually have to do. Now, there is this Sun opposition Saturn, and I have been talking about this Sun opposition Saturn for some time. I think this Sun opposition Saturn, if it affects you in any way, it it might be a reminder that you know certain things need to be organized. You know. If you want to be safe and secure, you, after all, need to understand what's happening everywhere in in your space. Your space, you have to be in complete control of your space. Because if there is some aspect of your space that is out of control, then there's always a possibility it, it could bite you. And so you have to understand what is happening. And perhaps the challenge here is to sort of understand that you do live in a chaotic world but also to understand that it needs to be structured as far as is possible you can't completely structure everything that's that's not possible but you can do your best and by creating as much structure and order as you can i think you'll be making yourself feel safer and i think you'll be making yourself feel healthier as well because an organized environment perhaps represents an organized mind and maybe an organized body, a body that is in tune with your environment. So that is something perhaps which you should be striving for. Now, I have said that it might be a difficult weekend for many people, or at least for the world at large. But the question is, well, you know, what about you? How, how do you actually relate to other people's issues, other people's problems. I mean, it may not be the problems of just individuals. It may be the problems of organizations and so on so on. But it does seem that there is some possibility areas that you can benefit from another person's misfortune. I mean, I know that's not a very nice thing to say, but if someone, if something has gone wrong in someone, for someone, then... Uh, I mean, someone's got to sort the problem out and it may be that, you know, money changes hands. So if you, for example, are involved in some kind of emergency management, I don't know, say you're, I don't know, I mean, I'm sure, if, I'm sure not many plumbers are watching this, but if you happen to be a plumber, for example, you could have a busy weekend because people might be having their disasters or if you're uh, someone who looks looks to create solutions you might be able to benefit from you know solving someone else's problem and yeah that might not be just about disasters you know if so if you're for example if you're i don't know working over the weekend and you 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 perhaps you have clients or whatever you, they might come to you because you've got solutions to their problems and it's not perhaps just about this weekend. I think that you know, when you look at the world and you look at what's happening in it, you just might be in a great position on reflection to take advantage of whatever's going on in it. And, you know, not just this weekend. And it might just be a realization here, Aries, that perhaps you can use your fundamental skills for, for making things better for people particularly for people who are in trouble. And perhaps it's it's your your enthusiasm. You know, you know, Aries Aries people do have 
a sort of a healing streak in terms of that basic uh, enthusiasm. You know, maybe particularly now when Charon is moving through Aries. So if if anyone's really feeling bad about something that just that Aries enthusiasm can make all the difference so I think Aries you can actually be a force for good this weekend and it's not necessarily about you benefiting from someone else's misfortune it's perhaps being able to just fix someone else someone else's misfortune and yeah just making them realize that things aren't so bad Taurus Taurus, you are maybe quite serious at the moment. Uh, serious, but also, I think, very talented. And I think perhaps this is really all about taking your talent seriously. And that's perhaps something you should be doing. And that's certainly something that Taurians can do. You, you decide that something is important for you. You want to do it and you start doing it and you feel that it is the most important thing in the world. And because of that focus, uh, I think you can really cover a lot of ground. Now, it's not necessarily quite as simple as that because... There is perhaps some danger of disruption. You know, where might that disruption come from? It might be from other people. You know, you might take something seriously, but other people might not. And you know, that can actually sometimes be a Taurus problem. Taurians, you know, can be quite straightforward. They regard something something that, that something that it really matters and th you know they get upset when uh, when things go wrong you know for example I remember I was in the 80s and I was I was sharing a flat an apartment with someone who with he was really into Dungeons and Dragons and he was a Taurus and he really took his Dungeons and Dragons seriously, and he was a dungeon master, and he was, um, he was, um, what was he doing? Yeah, he'd, he'd organized everything really properly, in, a, in that very kind of Torian kind of way. And I remember there was, you know, some of the other players were, one of them was sort of, he was, as... Taurus was explaining the dungeon the situation was was building a pile of um he was building a tower with um I think it's with biscuits as we call them in England I suppose you call them cookies in America and he was building this tower of biscuits and I remember Taurus got really upset because this person was not taking him seriously. I mean, he was a dungeon master. He had come up with something really important. And here was this person building a tower of biscuits. I mean, that is just totally trivial. So you might feel a bit like that. Something you take really seriously. And you don't think that other people are quite on your wavelength. And they don't seem to be listening. So you maybe have to work out how to respond to that situation maybe don't get too annoyed perhaps perhaps you were taking something too seriously and you weren't sort of flexible enough and you perhaps weren't considering how other people might be responding to you but you know this doesn't take away from the fact that you are doing something important this weekend or you should be doing something important and you need to um um perhaps realize that you find it important maybe other people don't find it quite so important and so that might mean you want to re might want to reconsider your relationship to other people or if you're really flexible you might be able to learn from the experience so i don't know you know i mean i've got taurus rising you know i do these videos i do take them seriously um I mean, I I do listen to the comments. I try, you know, when people are negative on my comments, I mean, when they make a comment, you know, when they say, make a comment about my presentation or something like that, 
you know i obviously i i try to i try to respond in a sort of a reasonable way and i don't obviously i don't like it when i'm criticized but at the same time when i'm criticized in the comment when people say <laughs> nasty things in the comments you know i do listen to them and so maybe i need to make some changes because of that i mean that's the kind of right approach that i think taurus rising should have i mean i as i said i've got taurus rising i'm a gemini but you know you when you when you see criticism when you see someone not taking you as seriously as you should as they as um you feel they should be you you need a little bit of respect and a little bit of flexibility because you might actually learn from it but you don't want to be in a situation where you respond in the wrong way where you feel that it's a threat to who you are and i think that so taurus has to get that balance right do take things seriously but don't take them too seriously and also this weekend don't forget that you know you are a dynamic person and you can make things happen and you don't have to be satisfied with the way things are and you can change things very quickly you can uh, create situations which uh, no one had planned for and maybe that sort of links with you know the via combustor you know we think in terms of a via combustor the moon moving through via, the via combustor that it's something negative where you know we are at the mercy of the cosmos things don't go to plan but maybe we can actually utilize the moon in the via combustor creating a situation which someone else hadn't planned for if necessary and it might be a position a situation where we can force people to stop what they're doing and will be strengthened by the via combustor and that will and we will actually then have a moment of power when we can dictate the agenda i mean i say we i suppose because i've i've got taurus rising and it, it may be sort of you you know as a Taurus, whether you've got Taurus rising or the sun in Taurus or the moon in Taurus, however you're looking at these interpretations. So don't underestimate yourself, Taurus. And I, I think that it, it, it looks like being a weekend when probably other people can't be avoided. Other people are going to be in some ways a little bit annoying. But uh, don't forget you're the one in control. Gemini. I suppose the main aspect this weekend, from a Gemini perspective, is going to be Mercury square Uranus. And it's quite an, an excitable aspect. And it's it's about the mind and it's about the way you communicate and things happen quickly your, your mind is moving the gemini mind is yeah it's always moving and you may be coming to some important realizations realizations which in some cases you may not be entirely comfortable with things you hadn't thought about before but now you're starting to get it and maybe you're now a little bit concerned so that might be a, a sense where you feel that you have to change your plans you know you've had a set of plans and now things have to quickly transition to to something else so yeah there is a bit of pressure there and the things you say could certainly be interesting uh, you may say things that no one was expecting and you say them and it, it really could have a big impact and i think people will listen to you because mercury is starting to move on to the fixed star regulus um, it's kind of not quite there yet but they, but it, but I think you're starting to feel the influence. You know, Mercury is is you know twenty eight, twenty nine Leo this weekend, and so this may be a time when you can 
uh, perhaps uh, be important. Tune into your importance. Uh, some people regard you as being important. And also, it's a good time for communicating with people who are important. And so, in terms of status, I think that it can actually be quite a quite a useful weekend when when I think that people are going to be taking you taking you seriously so that is certainly something that is fortunate but there are going to be limits to you know what you can do what you can can achieve simply because the moon is moving through Scorpio moving through moon moving through Scorpio I think does slow things down a little. Things aren't just happening quite as quickly as you'd like them to do. And things may be slower and more complicated than you wanted them to be. So do take your time, Gemini. Make sure that everything is properly prepared. And don't forget the emotional preparation. Because, you know, Geminis can sometimes be a little bit insensitive, but we are in a situation where we do have two personal planets in water signs. We've got the moon in Scorpio, Mars in Cancer. So if you ignore the emotional side of things, you might actually find that it's difficult to get anything done because you're just simply not on the same wavelength as other people and the overall environment. So do try to understand the emotional side of things, even if... In the first instance, that's not something you really want to get involved with. So, yeah, a, a little bit of sensitivity on your part could, I think, go go a long way. And I don't know what your plans are this weekend, but there is a an opposition between the Sun and Saturn, which I have been talking about a lot over the last few days. But this Sun opposition Saturn is exact. And perhaps you're starting to think about maybe work-life balance, if appropriate. Two things are out of balance here, or may, it may feel as if they're out of balance. And it may be your ambitions on one hand, and your family and your domestic life on the other hand. Um, so that is one way in which sun opposition saturn could be working you know saturn is in pisces saturn in pisces is very it's kind of serious ambitious focused but sun in virgo is all the other things you need to consider um, perhaps relating to your domestic life and your family and other responsibilities so somehow you've got to sort of bring all these things together and you can't throw all of your resources into one pole or the other. So if you were super ambitious, put everything into boosting your status, being out there, doing things in the world, then you would be out of balance and you would be undermining your own security. On the other hand, if you were to throw everything into your family and domestic life and whatever, you would just feel this horrible sense of missing out on something. So... You've got, you do have to get that balance right. Now, this Sun opposition Saturn aspect may have a purely psychological dimension because Pisces is the, um, is the 10th house f from a, a Gemini view and uh, Virgo is the fourth house. And in astrology, the fourth house and the tenth house are very much connected with the parental axis. And uh, usually, sort of in modern Western astrology, the fourth house is going to be the father, the tenth house is going to be the mother. I understand there are different views, and that maybe Hellenistic astrology has a perhaps slightly different view of the tenth house, or maybe sees the fourth house as being about the family in general. But, you know, I'm. I'm not an expert on Hellenistic astrology, but we perhaps can see Virgo Pisces for you as being the parental axis. And 
the parental axis, okay, that may be particularly important if your parents are still alive or one of your parents is still alive. But issues about sort of the mother-father dynamic could matter, even even if your parents are, you know, are long dead. I mean, my parents uh, my, are both dead, so perhaps over the weekend I should be thinking about the differences between my parents and how that that affects me and what the dynamic was so that could be a way to be a way to handle it so do think about the past and and i mean don't obviously obsess about the past but do think about the past and the influences on you because yeah it might be useful it can, and if your parents happen to still be alive then this might be a time when you need to spend time with your parents or talk to your parents unless of course you've um, perhaps had recent disagreements I don't know I don't know how you do how you deal with that but I suppose in general if you've got sun opposition Saturn that perhaps is is the idea that father and mother have differing views and represent very different things and there may be some kind of parental clash whether that parental clash happened I don't know 70 years ago or last week uh, that depends so maybe it's irrelevant maybe I'm reading too much into it but that might be something that Geminis want to want to think about Cancer Moon is in Scorpio and I think Cancer that actually you know that is a good thing I mean I know that Moon in Scorpio has a, a rather difficult reputation because the moon is in the moon is uh, fallen in Scorpio but moon in Scorpio it is a water sign and you've got you know Mars is in Cancer that's a water sign and I think it, it's nice if you're a Cancerian to have two personal planets in water signs because until quite recently there's there hasn't been much in water we've had Saturn in Pisces and Neptune in Pisces but you know there weren't any personal planets regularly in water signs and now with moon and mars in pisces and of course we've got saturn sorry moon in scorpio mars in cancer saturn in pisces you know you perhaps feel more at home i mean it's not quite a grand trine it's certainly not a grand trine but we have all three water signs are have got planets in them and not just transpersonal planets we've got saturn in pisces moon in scorpio mars in cancer and i just think that that is is fortunate for you because you perhaps feel that uh, you're not on your own that you know you're not alienated from your environment and you know there's a sense that uh, things are going your way and also that you can just understand things. It's very important to understand things and you can tune into just who you are and you don't have to be too defensive about it. I mean, I understand you are defensive in one sense because Mars is moving through Mars is moving through your sign, but I think that with Moon in Scorpio, Mars in Cancer, you you understand your limits and you understand where the dangers are, but I think you also understand where is safe. And because you understand where is safe, then you'll be able to sort of make the right decisions. And, you know, if you want to do something, I think you'll have, you know, you'll have no problems, you know, being able to do it. And, you know, just don't be afraid of your own genius. I suppose we've all got genius at some level, but right now, you know, you have got particular genius, something that you are really, really good at. Uh, no one is better at it than you. And you shouldn't be afraid of being able to just tune into it. And if other people uh, don't like it, well, too bad. But I think if, I don't think they will. I don't think they'll have any problems because actually I think that from a relationship perspective i think this weekend actually looks quite good because you know the moon in scorpio is starting to make a trine with saturn in pisces so you know, moon clearly rules rules cancer uh 
Saturn rules Capricorn, your opposite sign. So when you've got Moon trine, when you've got Moon trine Saturn, that, that would suggest that you and the important people in your life should actually be getting on very well with each other. And I think that you're going to get on increasingly well as the weekend progresses. And so by the end of a weekend, we haven't just got the moon trine Saturn, we've also got uh, the moon trine the sun. And that is really useful because, yes, we do have this sun opposition Saturn, which perhaps could be a difficult aspect, could remind you that you and other people don't always get on with each other. But by the end of a weekend, if there have been any conflicts or misunderstandings, then I think that that moon trine Saturn, moon sextile the sun, should be able to resolve them. So I think in that sense, the weekend should end on a fairly harmonious note. Leo, the big aspect this weekend is Sun opposition Saturn. Now, I've already talked about the Sun opposition Saturn quite a lot in, in previous readings. I think yesterday I talked about it. I think even the day before I talked about it. Uh, so there's some danger of being a little bit boring here. So I don't want to spend too much time talking about Sun opposition Saturn. But I think you know, the main takeaway from Sun Opposition Saturn is that you cannot take it for granted that you will get on with everyone. So don't assume friendly relationships and do assume that you and someone else have a different perspective. And it's not the kind of perspective that can just be resolved through a friendly conversation. Uh, if you want to get on with people, you may have to, you and them may have to appreciate that in in some respects you are very different, um, different views, different philosophies, uh, different background, whatever it is. And so, if you can handle the differences and respect, I suppose each other's differences, then maybe that's the best way of getting over the um, the sun opposition Saturn, and also the sun opposition Saturn may have a financial dimension and it may be that your approach to money and another person's approach to money are really not quite the same and that has to be worked through and I don't want to dwell on that though there are other things going on and we have a square aspect between Mercury and Uranus. So Mercury is about to leave your leave your sign. So this weekend, yes, Mercury is in um, in Leo, but it, it's not going to stay in Leo forever. And you know, let me just tell you when when Mercury does move into move into Virgo and when it moves out of your sign, just so we're sure about this. Uh, so looks to me as if okay so mercury moves into yeah mercury moves into virgo on monday may actually be late on sunday if you're in uh california so or the west coast alaska alaska hawaii so basically this weekend you know that's it all the planets are out of Leo. You've had this time where there have been planets in Leo, but now this is it. They'll be gone soon. They'll be gone by the end of the weekend and into Monday. So, in a sense, the last hurrah of Mercury in Leo, of Mercury in your sign, is going to be Mercury square Uranus. And so that, that square between Mercury and Uranus, I think, is actually quite useful. I mean, a lot of people might find it stressful, but I don't think you find it stressful. I think it's exciting and it's a time when you can present yourself and you can present your ideas, particularly as Mercury is very close to Regulus, the royal star, a sign of being important, of being the centre of attention. And 
And so even if you feel that you don't really want to be the centre of attention, maybe you should be the centre of attention, at least for moments. Just get that moment when you can really talk about who you are, what you want, be appreciated for who you are. And it may be, in some cases, a sense of, you know, speak now or forever hold your peace. So if you've got something that needs to be said, then... This weekend might be, in some respects, a last chance to say it. Okay, you can say it. Sure, you can say it at a future, um, on a future occasion. But things might not quite be so well aligned, Leo. So I would have said, uh, you know, do take do take advantage of it because uh, you, you don't want to miss your moment, and. Yeah, if you're working over the weekend, that Mercury Square Uranus could be useful. Or even if you're planning on working or you're writing, I don't know, job application letters or you're trying to work out what career you should follow or what ne what your next job you should apply for, you know, if appropriate, then that Mercury Square Uranus uh, could be quite useful. And you might, you might have some ideas and inspirations that could... Uh, yeah, it could be quite inspiring for you. So don't ignore that Mercury square Uranus and you know, don't feel that you've got forever to deliver a message because if you don't deliver some messages this weekend, that, that, that might perhaps be your uh, last chance. I mean, not the absolute last chance, but the environment might not be so good in order to not just deliver that message, but to get a, a serious response so that people really understand what you're talking about. Leave it to next week and uh, the situation just won't be, won't be quite so good. Virgo. So I was just talking to Leo about Mercury Square Uranus and Mercury Square Uranus uh, is important for you as well because... Mercury, after all, does rule Virgo. And so as Mercury, uh, you know, rules Virgo uh, and Mercury is square Uranus, there may be a, a certain sense of excitement. You know, you've got things on your mind uh, that you want to want to talk about you want to discuss and you've got ideas you've got some really interesting ideas and you know sometimes virgos can you know try too hard to play it safe you know it's important to play it safe and you don't want to be too speculative but some of these ideas you're having yeah they might be speculative but just because something is speculative doesn't mean to say it's a bad thing I mean, you don't necessarily have to act on an idea immediately. You start off with an idea and then you kind of work out where is that idea going. So I think that uh, you can be quite inspired this weekend. And yeah, if you have a crazy idea, don't just dismiss it out of hand. It may actually be very useful. Maybe it has to be... be structured a bit and uh, you know you have to work out how to make something practical it might sound crazy to begin with but if you work on it you can really I think create something which I think can really really help you uh, in the coming week or two and just also a reminder that Mercury is now moving on to the fixed star Regulus and so what happens with Mercury is that Mercury is about to move into Virgo. And so Mercury moves into Virgo. Well, if you're in California, it moves or the West Coast, it moves into Virgo late on late on Sunday. Or certainly by Monday, Mercury will be moving into Virgo. And that's certainly good news. I mean, Mercury moving into your sign. So it's possible, Virgo, that you're on the cusp of a real improvement in things, that things are about to get better and you may have you may be in a situation where you feel you've been holding back on something but now you can finally uh, put it into action and so that's something to prepare for and also Mercury is as I said Mercury's on Regulus so this is a, a royal star so 
it's a it's a time when you really can get attention and when you when you can be appreciated and if you need to get in contact with important people you know now might be now might be your chance though on the theme of people we cannot forget that the sun is opposition saturn this weekend it's exactly opposition saturn and you know the sun is in virgo saturn is in pisces you know it's a main axis of your chart and that axis that main axis you know the virgo pisces axis can be about relationships close relationships and so with sun opposition saturn close relationships have to be treated i think with with great caution you you can't make assumptions and you don't want to jump to conclusions and you've got to try to be realistic and it, perhaps part of it is asking asking yourself um, how useful are certain people are they helping you or are they holding you back and if they're holding you back uh, is it a situation that is uh, irredeemable or is it something temporary or is it your imagination and that's always a possibility you know we always want to come up with reasons why we can't do something and it's kind of easier to think that the reason we can't do something is because it's not in our control it's because it's someone else holding us back and in some cases we're right but in some cases it's our imagination uh, we're just it's an excuse so you do have to have some self-awareness here with the sun opposition saturn don't automatically blame people if things aren't going well for you it, it may just be that it may be an excuse it may be a projection but it is possible that someone is preventing you from being yourself i'm not saying it's gonna it is the case and you have this is why it's just very important this weekend virgo but you're very self-aware complete self-awareness is necessary you've got to look at, at yourself and your relationship with other people with with complete honesty and you know i think you can do it you're a virgo you're sensible you're practical and i i think that uh you're not going to be overwhelmed by your own ego. That's 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 not going to happen. So that may be, that may actually be the key to the whole weekend to sort of understanding how that Sun opposition Saturn is uh, is working. Libra. So this weekend, it may be quite difficult to make plans because you know things can just happen. Uh, particularly on Sunday when we you've got uh, Venus sesquiquadrate Uranus so Venus will be moving to an 135 degree aspect with Uranus and Uranus can be a planet which is about disruptions things um, maybe not going to plan you know you think you've sorted everything out but it just uh, doesn't work out so if you do get this kind of disruption you know you know what is it about and why might this disruption happen it may be that you just made too many assumptions libra you know you thought that everything was going to be fine that everything was in order and then you realize that this uh, simply is not the case and so libra it's very important that you are as uh, flexible as possible and that you have always have a, you always have a standby plan and that you don't take what people say at face value i mean it's easy to do that but people might make promises and you might 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 say that's fine in fact it can it can actually work both ways with venus says with quadrate uranus it's not just about other people's unreliability that actually can be your reliability and it may be perhaps libra that to weekend you might find that you've kind of double booked you've made promises to two people or 
promises perhaps to go to two places and at the same time. So that is certainly possible. Or you might just might find it difficult to say no. And you've just gone along with the crowd and then you reach a certain point where you think, oh, no, no, that's not really something that you particularly want to do. So, Libra, you don't want to be accused of being a flake, do you? So I think it's just important that you are honest with yourself and other people about what you can do and what you can't do. And uh, if in doubt, I suppose, say no. Now, that's I, I, that's, I suppose that sounds a little bit negative, but I mean, I'm just trying to be realistic. On a positive note, the moon is in Scorpio and Mars is in Cancer. And the you know, moon in Scorpio, sure, it has its own problems, moon being in Scorpio. It can can be problematic. I think that the issues with breaking promises and not turning up to, to places because you just maybe can't be bothered or you're double booked, that's intensified by the fact that the moon is in Scorpio, especially on Saturday, you know, you know, you know, you'll have Saturday, early Sunday, and when for sure the moon will be in the via combustor. So that can just create situations which you, you haven't planned for. Or maybe you're the thing that other people haven't planned for. Moon and Scorpio, the you might also have some impact on, have some relationship to money. And you may have made assumptions about money and you may have made assumptions about how much things will cost. And... You might then realise that these assumptions are incorrect. You perhaps underestimated how much something is going to cost. If, and if that is the case, then sure, you just have to pull out and say it can't be done. If, if it's too expensive and it's not part of your your financial planning, then you, I suppose, need to be honest about that. Yet, on the positive note, as I said, Moon is in Scorpio, Mars is in Cancer. Mars in Cancer, I think, for you, is quite useful. And it's particularly useful because the Moon and Mars have this trine relationship to each other. I understand that trine is not exact, but it's just there's a trine relationship because you've got two planets in water signs, and these water signs have a tri do have this trine connection. And I think that that might allow you to do some useful work if you have the opportunity. I think that you're go you are going to be relatively ambitious I think you're certainly going to think that there are things that need to be done and you probably are not going to want to wait until next week until Monday to do them so there is the possibility there of doing something useful and it might be useful in terms of money it might be useful in terms of career or business or just just general organization and working out what you need to do to you know move forward with your agenda you know whatever it might be so perhaps that is uh, something that you need to focus on now if you are interacting with other people i suppose yeah you might be double booked but if you actually get to be with other people then Mercury is square Uranus and Mercury is in Leo. So Mercury in Leo is kind of nice and it's quite sort of communicative and you're able to talk to people and you're able to, in some ways, you know, massage their egos with you know, by saying nice things. But at the same time, Mercury square Uranus could be surprising. You know, you might be with someone or with a group of people where just something happens which uh, causes the atmosphere to suddenly change. And then that something might actually be you. It might be something you say because Mercury square Uranus could be, could be about you saying something in a social situation which has a big impact. And... I suppose, you know, being a Libran, you, you understand the glue that brings people together, that connects people together, and you understand the balance. And by the same token, you know how to unbalance things, you know how to unglue things. So it may just take a couple of words to, to make everything kind of fall apart on a social level. I mean, at least that's a possibility. I'm not saying that that's, that's going to happen. Now, as far as, you know, what you should be doing with the weekend i mean it, to summarize it 
I think you need to be honest with yourself. Uh, don't make promises. Uh, don't agree to things unless you're really sure of yourself. It's better to say no than to say yes, all things being equal. And I do think that from a financial and organizational point of view, I think that there is some useful things you can do, especially towards the end of a weekend when the moon in Scorpio makes a makes a trine to Saturn. I think that could be very very disciplined and you can you can focus on something that is important and perhaps you can create order out of chaos. Scorpio. Well, it's certainly nice, Scorpio, that the moon is uh, moving into your sign. You know, I know a lot of people are a bit, are a bit wary of the moon in Scorpio, but uh, for you, it's fine. Um, I, I suppose you could say, well, a, a, a poisonous snake can't bite itself, can it? I mean, it can bite itself, but it's not going to poison itself, is it? I mean, it's used to it. I mean, you are who you are, and uh, a Scorpio is you're in your element, and so however difficult or complicated things are for others i think that just by and large you're going to understand what is happening and you're going to be i think um i think you're going to be very aware and particularly you're going to be emotionally aware you know the moon is in scorpio mars your ruler is in cancer uh, so water signs got Saturn in Pisces, another water sign. So I think to a great extent you're in your element and you're going to know what people are thinking and feeling and doing and your sensitivity is going to be pretty good and you're probably, of all the 12 signs, you're probably going to be the most sensitive this weekend. And I think that uh, you're going to be able to, you know, make your own choices. You know, what is what is important to you. I, I don't even think there's any real need to sort of advise you what you should or shouldn't be doing this weekend, because I actually just think you you just you just know. And I think though you are you are going to know about other people's difficulties i think you'll be very very tuned into that so if anyone's got problems uh, there are things going wrong with their lives you'll know about it you'll, you'll just feel it and you'll be able to observe the body language and this might mean that you can potentially benefit from a situation uh or you might be able to resolve the situation. Um, you know, there is a sense of benefiting from other people's misfortunes. I think I talked about that when I was discussing Aries, because you see Aries and Taurus, sorry, Aries and Scorpio both have Mars as their ruler. And so I think that that's, that's something that you may be able to do. But I think when I when I when I say benefit, okay, sure, you could benefit in a material way, but you could, of course, benefit in an emotional way because there's nothing better, is there, from being able to solve someone's problems, and so um, it just makes you feel good. So if you see that someone's in difficulty, then you can, I think, intervene, work out what's bothering with them, and just come up with a solution. And I think that your strength of character and your emotional awareness will very much be able to see you through. Now, at the same time, I think this weekend you do have a lot to say and your response to the, your response to the situation around you at a mental level, is going to be quite fast. I think you're going to see things and you're going to want to respond to things, but perhaps faster than usual. I mean, very often Scorpio is quite a slow sign. It takes its time to sort of work out, you know, what's going, what's going, what's going on. But, uh, you know, you can be fast. Um, and, 
you can actually surprise people with how fast you can be and how fast you can respond. And that can be in terms of, um, of, of words and what you're saying and uh, how, you re- how you reply to people um, when they say something that maybe you weren't expecting or it just comes up. And it means that I think that you're probably relatively shock proof as well. So if you're told something surprising, unexpected, or something happens that no one else would, or even not just words, but events happen, you'll be able to just understand it quickly and decisively. And so, you know, this may actually link with, you know, what I was saying right at the beginning of this video, I was sort of suggesting at the beginning of this video, that it may actually be a difficult weekend in general. There are a lot of there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. You know, I talked about the fact that, you know, there's a heliocentric um, Saturn Pluto semi square, and you've got heliocentrically you've got the Earth conjunct Saturn, and that could all be rather rather difficult. But you seem to get it all, and again, there is a sense of immunity. I mean, I don't want to exaggerate the sense of immunity, but there's perhaps a certain immunity to the poison in the world. <laughs> I know that sounds a bit melodramatic, but because you have that immunity, and I think that immunity comes with understanding, you've kind of seen it all before, you can really keep your head. When, when other people are panicking and, and other people don't know what to do, it's all kind of obvious to you. And... Uh, and this can this can make you a really good person to have around, especially when especially when things are going wrong. Because I think that you know by and large you are going to be able to keep your cool this weekend. Sagittarius, Sagittarius, you might be of the opinion that you don't necessarily have to do very much. And that might be because the moon is moving into Scorpio. So, you know, when the moon is moving into Scorpio, you know, what, you know, what that means is that the moon is moving into a fairly secretive sector of your chart. You know, Scorpio is the sign just before Sagittarius. And so when the moon moves into Scorpio, you might just feel that really there's not very much you want to do or indeed that you have to do and it may be a time for Sagittarians to just reflect and and as the weekend progresses I think increasingly you are going to want to reflect just uh, you know soak up the vibes be yourself not feel that you actually have to have to do anything and that's certainly a possible path for you. Yet, we can't avoid the fact that the Sun is opposition Saturn. And, you know, this weekend, the Sun opposition Saturn is exact. And the the Sun opposition Saturn makes it difficult for you to entirely relax. Because with the Sun opposition Saturn, you are, I think, aware that there are Certain things that you probably have to do, you maybe don't want to do them, but you feel that you somehow should be doing them. And at the same time, you're also aware of but, but what is holding you up. And you may feel that there are these sort of just responsibilities. I mean, Sagittarius is a sign that's not really into responsibilities. I mean, textbook Sagittarius does not spend all its time worrying about obligation and responsibility but i think this weekend you are a, you do have a sense of obligation and you also have a, have a sense of what you want to be doing for yourself and there is a certain uneasiness there and so with this sun opposition saturn it may be that there's something you need to confront something that has perhaps been an issue for some time, maybe a period of months, even years, 
but probably more likely months. And perhaps now, Sagittarius, is a time where you actually do need to confront it. And it might seem impossible, but if you go with the flow, I think you actually can start making progress. And perhaps in that sense, you have to start to perhaps understand what your strength is. And at the moment, your strength is being able to do things in a way that is subtle and is not entirely obvious. So that's not a very Sagittarian approach. But if you're doing things in a way that people hardly notice, then you're able to move quickly because there's not going to be so much opposition. As soon as people notice you, then the problems start. But you kind of want to get as close to your target as you can without being noticed, without the dog barking, without uh, the floor creaking. And so that perhaps is what you should be trying to do. And then I think but by the end of the weekend, as the moon starts to... Make, makes an aspect, makes a trine to Saturn. Okay, it might be into Monday, depending on your time zone. As the moon makes that trine to Saturn, I think that that's when things will start to sort of come together for you. And you can take a situation which at first sight seemed to be one big conflict, but with, when the moon trines, a, trines Saturn, it also makes a sextile to the sun. And so you actually find a way perhaps of dealing with a conflict uh, or at least dealing with a situation where perhaps you and someone else had a completely different view of the world, or it was just a, sub a subject that you, someone was terrified of bringing up. And if you get your timing right, I think that a source of tension can actually be resolved in a way that is actually harmonious for all parties. Capricorn. Capricorn, the... Sun is opposition Saturn. I know I said yesterday the sun was opposition Saturn, but I have to remind you that of this fact and, you know, Saturn is your ruler. And so if the sun is opposition Saturn, that means that something may be bothering you and something may be at odds with the way you want things to happen. Something may be holding you up. Uh, something may be irritating you. And it's important to work it out and, you know, respond accordingly. And the question is, you know, are you dealing with an irritation that needs to be removed? Or are you dealing with a reminder, a reminder that perhaps you haven't got everything right. And, you know, on and off Capricorn, you know, I've been talking about the value of knowledge. And I think that this sun opposition Saturn is about potentially knowledge. It's, it's about your knowledge and your experience and what you can do and what you can't do. And just perhaps a reminder that you haven't necessarily got all the answers. And so if you find yourself in a difficult situation or a situation that makes you angry, then, you know, consider why that might be the case. Uh, you know, it, it just might be the case that there's something you haven't addressed. You, you, you thought you understood it, but you haven't understood it. And perhaps in the past you maybe hadn't done enough research or hadn't done enough thinking. But with this Sun opposition Saturn, it does seem that there is a way to potentially resolve the issue. And it does, I think, on your part, require a certain amount of humility and an acceptance that maybe there's someone out there who knows more than you do, has got has got some of the answers which you have been searching for, but so far you you haven't been able to discover. But, you know, that emphasizes this sun opposition Saturn. It could be a problem. It could make the weekend difficult, but it could be an opportunity. So I'm hoping that you can actually see it as an opportunity 
and that you can see a dynamic tension as something um something exciting and something encouraging you know it's it's exciting to know that you don't have all the answers sometimes that maybe someone else has the answers and that that, that someone else is pre- is prepared prepared to provide you with these answers and you know that goes back to you know to the importance of of humility but you're a capricorn i don't think that you're particularly bothered by humility provided particularly well particularly if that humility in the end has a favorable outcome and looking at other stuff going on the moon is moving through scorpio i that moon in scorpio you know does indicate that you can be reasonably sociable you don't have to do things on your own i think you're going to enjoy other people's company you know provided it's happening at, on on at your level and uh, you know that at a level that you understand that is not too jarring and of course i understand also that it may be necessary to interact with people who maybe know more than you do that you can get advice from but that aside the moon is moving through scorpio and it's making a trine to saturn so at the end of a weekend the moon makes this trine to saturn and i think that trine to saturn is going to be very helpful in terms of getting on with people that that moon trine saturn may be actually critical in terms of getting on with people um it provides a method of communication that may not have been there in the past so i know that there's always a temptation with the weekend as you move on as you move into sunday evening that things are supposed to sort of completely stop you know sunday evening is this point of quiet where people just close down but i think the the, the sunday evening actually could be the most useful part of the weekend uh when you are best able to resolve things and yeah best able to communicate and you know by the end of a weekend i think in terms of relationships that things should really be working very well and there can be good lines of emotional communication and also you know quite a lot of uh, mutual understanding so perhaps the overall message for this weekend is it's one of perseverance you know to begin with it might feel a little bit difficult as you're trying to understand what's happening but if you persevere and you're open minded and you have a certain sense of humility then by the end of the weekend i think you're going to be much more comfortable with yourself and also with the people around you aquarius aquarius i do have to talk about the sun saturn opposition again uh, i talked about it yesterday and i'm going to talk about it again today because it's important saturn is your ruler uh, sun is opposition saturn and you know it is a reminder that you can't necessarily get on with everyone that uh, there could be differences of opinion and you have to work out how best to deal with these differences of opinion you know whether these differences of opinion can be resolved through discussion or whether they just have to be accepted and that you may want to just steer clear of people who in the past you've clashed with um, sometimes that's the best way of resolving a conflict is uh, to withdraw from the situation but aquarius you have to decide what is appropriate but the weekend is not just about that sun opposition saturn you know there are certainly other things going on and you know we've got the moon in scorpio and the moon in scorpio does remind you of some of the things that you want to accomplish uh, that perhaps you haven't been able to accomplish over the last few weeks for one reason or another but now you're feeling that yes now might be the time and i say feeling you're feeling it because it's moon in scorpio moon in scorpio is is it's it's a very emotional placement and so this moon in scorpio is 
moving towards a trine of Saturn, and Saturn is your ruler. And so I think that this moon trine Saturn could be actually quite useful in terms of your ambitions, getting what you want. And of course, it depends what you're planning on doing this Sunday. And if you are focused on what you would like to happen, you know, the ambitions you, you want to realize, then the moon in Scorpio is going to really help. It will sort of give you, give you insights and it will give you emotional insights. And I think also it will enable you to understand perhaps who your friends and allies are. Again, especially at the end of a because at the end of a weekend, you know, we've got you know the moon not just trying Saturn, but the moon sextile Sun, and so that perhaps indicates some kind of a resolution. Maybe people who were your rivals could be your friends. I'm not saying that's going to happen over the weekend, but you might be able to realize this, that it's easy to see everything in positive and negative terms. You know, you've got your friends, you've got your enemies, this person's good for you, this person's bad for you. you. It may not even be about people, it may be about situations, just being able to neatly categorize things into good and bad. But I think over the weekend, you'll perhaps realize that things are actually more complicated than that and perhaps more nuanced, and that uh, things that you thought were a problem may actually be an opportunity. And I think Aquarius, it just could be very useful for you to uh, recognize that. Now, in terms of close relationships, you know, we just cannot avoid that Sun opposition Saturn. And that Sun opposition Saturn still, it is exact. And you know, if you are close to someone, I do think that this weekend the differences between you and that person may be very clear. Your your worldview might be different. Your priorities might be different. And, and I think that will be obvious. And, you know, if that person is important, you can't just uh, disappear. You've got to accept this situation and work out how to deal with it. But again, the moon, as I said, the moon is making the sextile to the sun and is making the trine to Saturn. So even if you and someone else seem to be poles apart, I do think that that moon in Scorpio and the the sensitivity of the moon in Scorpio and perhaps the maturity of moon in Scorpio is is perhaps Aquarius going to allow you to resolve the situation and... Uh, Perhaps in the end, you can actually work with someone who is very different from you and you can just, you might actually never resolve those differences. You're always going to be different from this person, but still there is perhaps scope for you and someone else being able to um, perhaps complement each other. And perhaps that's perhaps what you should be looking looking for, how differences can be sort of appreciated and respected and yes complement each other Pisces Pisces I have to talk again about the Sun opposition Saturn I mean I, I talked about it yesterday I'm going to talk about it again because Sun opposition Saturn is it is across the main axis of your chart so, uh, as you can see, you've got Saturn in, at 16 Pisces. You've got Sun at 16 Virgo. They are opposition each other. And that Saturn opposition, the Sun, really does indicate, I think, some kind of challenge. I mean, normally the dog starts barking while I'm doing Sagittarius. This time the dog's barking through Pisces. Sorry about that, but the sun is opposition Saturn, so you're aware of something on the outside, something you're not fully aware of, which is 
which is challenging you. And I do think you do feel challenged. You may even feel that your authority is being challenged. I mean, I mean, I understand that we don't normally think about Pisces in terms of authority, but we do think about Pisces in terms of authority when Saturn is moving through Pisces. So the question is, how do you deal with challenges to your authority? And it, it may simply be a question of respect, someone not respecting you as they should be. Uh, because this is a time when Pisceans deserve respect. So uh, you have to deal with these challenges, I suppose, in quite a mature way, because if you just react sort of negatively to challenges, then in a way your authority is further undermined. That is a problem with being an authority figure, isn't it? And of course, you may not be an authority figure, but if you are an authority figure uh, and you respond in, a, in in the wrong way, that can actually be a sign of weakness. So if there are challenges, you've got to be very mature about it. You've got to maintain your composure and at the same time, try to understand you know, what the nature of the challenge is. Is the challenge useful? Or is it destructive? And that, that's always the thing with challenges. Sometimes challenges are actually useful because they help us to grow as a person. Other times the challenge just comes from someone or a situation. They're just trying to bring us down. So you've got to distinguish between, between the two. Um, but you can handle it because I do think right now you do have the emotional maturity to handle it because you know, we do have the moon in Scorpio which is a water sign, you know, Pisces is a water sign. We do have Mars in Cancer. And so with Moon and Mars in, in water signs, making trine relationships of Pisces, which is your sign, and with Saturn in Pisces, I think that you do have, as I said, the emotional maturity to actually be able to work out you know, what the best way to respond is. And don't get too caught up in the minutiae of everyday living, uh, maybe even everyday challenges. Always try to sort of take the higher ground. And I think that that is something you can do with Moon in Scorpio. And, you know, that Moon in Scorpio is starting to move towards a trine of Saturn. And, you know, by the end of the weekend, the, 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 the Moon trine Saturn is in place. And that does allow you to move beyond uh, the here and now and to start to see things in a in a broader perspective and of course when you start to see things in a broader perspective you might then realize that perhaps challenges your authority or people suggesting you might be wrong are all really very trivial that there are broader things to be thinking about and you might perhaps start to see yourself in, yeah, in a wider perspective. It's not just about you. And it is about, instead, it is about, you know, the whole universe, every, everyone on this planet. And, you know, you understand this planet and you understand not just the challenges that you're going through, but the challenges that everyone else is going through. And I think that you're going to get this great sense of perspective and you know with perspective then comes further maturity and just a, a further understanding of who you are and where you where you are going now as far as um, relationships are concerned and I've already talked about this sun opposition Saturn and perhaps challenges to your authority but it but there is a another thing going on is that Mercury is on moving on to Regulus and Mercury is getting ready to change sign. And from a Pisces perspective, Mercury is often connected with um, and other people. And so Mercury is on the verge of moving from Leo to Virgo. And that might indicate that someone is about to change in a way that could impact you. Now, it may be that that's someone you've never heard of yet, or you don't really know about them. They may be about to become visible. So someone who you, were, you weren't really thinking about may become visible over the next couple of days. Or 
it may be that someone you already know undergoes some kind of change and a change which um, makes them more part of your life and I do think that this person could be quite useful because Mercury is conjunct Regulus and so Mercury conjunct Regulus may be someone who it's perhaps easy to underestimate you don't think they're important you don't think they amount to much but that's because you don't really know and if you were to find out more about this person you might actually realize you know what they can do and what they can achieve and perhaps how they might be able to be useful and that is it those are my forecasts for the 12 signs and now i want to look at things from a perspective of the e Ching. So I asked the question, what is the weekend of September the 7th and 8th going to be like oh, for those watching this, the, watching the I Ching section of this video? And the first hexagram I got was hexagram number 61 which is inner truth and this is about discovering the inner truth our truth i mean truth is always a problem isn't it because it's it's rare for there to be an absolute truth but each of us has our individual truths and the truth perhaps represents just an understanding of what our path is and you know each of us have our individual paths and I suppose we have to find it and now when we're talking about the path and our truth it can change so what is true for today might not be true for tomorrow we think about destinies lasting a whole lifetime but maybe destinies can just last one day they can last five minutes what am I supposed to be doing in this five minute period but this I Ching reading is just for the weekend and it's it is a time when we may be able to convey the truth and that people are finally going to understand what we're talking about uh, you know maybe it's taken them a long time but they they finally get it and so that's the broad picture but there are some moving lines and we see that the third line moves. Now, the third line perhaps warns us, you know, when we're trying to work out the path forward for ourselves. It's important not to be too reliant on other people and on the outside world. It's very easy to think that there's not much we can do because we've got to consider what other people are going to do. Are they going to turn up? Are they going to be nice to us? Uh, are they going to give us something? Are they going to listen to us? These kind of things. And so we can end up feeling that we don't have any control. And I don't think this is helped by the fact, or maybe it just reflects the fact that astrologically we do have the Sun opposition Saturn and I do think that with the Sun opposition Saturn over the weekend there is a tendency to think that we're not in full control that there are things out there which are having an impact on us and we can't really do anything about it and this third line of the inner truth moving is that's kind of what it's telling us it's telling us that our whole happiness you know whether we're delighted and happy and everything's going our way or whether we're in a state of despair is totally dependent on external circumstances so we don't really want to be in that situation when our, our happiness or unhappiness depends on what is going on out there we need to but we need to be thinking about the inner truth we need to be thinking about our truth and it shouldn't matter whether someone lets us down or doesn't let us down whether we get the letter we're looking for in the mail I suppose, I suppose that would be on Saturday because there isn't usually mail on Sunday you know whether we get the letter we're waiting for if we don't get the letter we're miserable if we get the letter with a rejection we're miserable if we're told 
if we're if it's an acceptance at it, we're over the moon. We don't want to be in that situation. The truth, the real truth, should be beyond that. It should be beyond these these external things which which shouldn't really affect us. And then the fifth line moves, and the fifth line is is a better line. It it is about finding some kind of um, composure, and perhaps also we can find some kind of composure through other people. Uh, and I know that we shouldn't be reliant on other people, so there's a little bit of a contradiction there, but sun opposite, you know, perhaps it links also with that sun opposition Saturn. Saturn can represent a voice of reason, a voice of maturity, someone giving us some advice and some help and some structure. And structure is perhaps what we really need. And someone giving us this structure, and so that we, we're not totally all over the place you know we're moving from one cent one thing to another getting some advice from someone help from someone not feeling it's not feeling everything's our responsibility but at the same time it's just very important to have agency and that that is a key thing in a truth you know whatever happens in the end it is uh down to us and this uh hexagram in a truth it does move it because we've got two moving lines it uh it moves to the taming power of the great number 26 and that's i think is us having to be tamed you know the great we are the great we are the great we're the ones who have uh, strong emotions who perhaps go all over the place um, we have a strong sense of what we're supposed to be doing. We get upset if we can't do what we want to do. Again, Sun opposition Saturn. I think Sun opposition Saturn actually is taming power of the great. We need to sort of put ourselves under some kind of control. That control might come from ourselves, or it might come from some might come from some outside force. Maybe maybe someone who is wiser than us. Um, who has more authority than us, but we do need to tame ourselves and make sure that our heart doesn't go all over the place, that our emotions are in check and that we we perhaps realise that, you know, we don't have to hang it, we don't have to be in a situation where everything has to happen at once and it shouldn't matter whether we get good news or bad news, whether we get no news. It shouldn't matter. We just need to have a certain sense of self-control. And I think that is the best way of dealing with the challenges um, of the weekend. And perhaps one of the challenges of the weekend is is represented by the sun opposition Saturn. And in this video, I want to look at sun opposition Saturn, You know what it might mean in a horoscope and I also want to look at some Sun Saturn events so Sun opposition Saturn is traditionally quite a difficult energy to deal with um, it's uh, uh, it, it holds us back and so people with Sun opposition Saturn in their charts they might feel that uh, they can't do everything they want to do that there is always something restricting them and they can't always be themselves and sun opposition saturn is an aspect that i think is probably strongly connected with one's parents i mean i i don't know for sure what you know if you look at liz green for example if you looked at uh, Liz Green's astrology and how she would see the sun opposition Saturn. I, I mean, I'm not sure, but uh, I haven't got any evidence of this, but I would guess that Liz Green, for example, if she was looking at a chart with sun opposition Saturn, she would go on and on about the impact on w the psychological aspect of it and the parental aspect. Um, so uh, you might want to see what Liz Green says about it. I'm sure there's something on the internet about her and sun Saturn. And... So it's an aspect which is um, is psychological. It does sort of represent our roots and perhaps it may represent uh, a conflict between between one's parents and it may be that 
one's experience of childhood is maybe somewhat difficult. You know, one parent preventing us doing from doing us what we want to do and uh, feeling just a sense of restriction, which, yeah, which started from when we were very young and has just uh, and just has stayed with us. And so it can be quite tough. But on the plus side, Sun opposition Saturn can be, I suppose, very structured and very disciplined. It's capable of hard work. And I think it can also be, it can be very ambitious and ambitious in a kind of a grinding way. Someone perhaps realizes what they want to do and they just keep keep plowing on. Now, because the sun is a male planet, it does mean that perhaps uh, if, if a woman has sun opposition Saturn, that may say something about the man she is attracted to. That is possible. Uh, she may be attracted to someone who is very disciplined, very focused, maybe someone who is quite restrictive. And I suppose if a woman has sun opposition Saturn, you might say, well, that says something about her father. And so she's going to want to see some aspect of her father in her partner. Remember, Saturn is a kind of universal significator of the father. So that would be one way of looking at it. So um, let's uh, look at some charts. I just wanted to start by looking at actually the Sun opposition Saturn this weekend. This is the Sun opposition Saturn this weekend. I've said it for Berlin. Why not? Uh, so this happens uh, early on uh, early on um, Berlin. That happens yeah, September the 8th, 2024. Let's just make sure I've got, got the time rights for that. So the sun, the sun Saturn aspect is at 5.35 a.m. London time on Sunday. So that means Berlin time, it would be at 6.35 a.m. So even though it says 5.35 on this chart, it's actually 6.35 if you happen to be in Berlin. So the reason I actually am looking at the Sun Saturn chart from a perspective of Berlin is that the Sun opposition Saturn is right on the ascendant. So at the moment of that Sun Saturn opposition set for Berlin, you've got Sun exactly on the ascendant and you've got Saturn exactly on the descendant. And so it's possible that this Sun Saturn aspect could could affect Germany quite powerfully. And it might be about uh, about leadership, it might be about restriction and perhaps things going on with the economy and Germany's attitudes to its enemies. I suppose at the moment the enemies are Russia, the external enemies. I suppose you've also got the internal enemies, haven't you? I suppose they might regard the AFD as an internal enemy. But it is a, it may be perhaps a difficult time for Germany because of um, because of that sun opposition Saturn being exactly on the ascendant on, on Sunday. I mean, I suppose it could relate to events, but I'm, all, I'm a bit wary about that. You know, we have this, we have a theoretically bad chart set for Berlin, but these theoretically bad charts very often don't work out in terms of actual events. But still, I thought I would uh, point that out to you. Now, looking at a few people who do have Sun opposition Saturn. Uh, one of them is Brigitte Macron, the wife of Emmanuel Macron. You know, remember, she is, um, what is she, 20-something years, 20-something <laughs> years younger, sorry, 20-something years older than her husband. And there is her Sun opposition Saturn. And I I wonder with that sun opposition Saturn if it's some kind of double projection here. So sun the sun would represent in her chart the man she is attracted to. You know she's born by the by the in the hours of day. So I think the sun would perhaps represent her 
her partner Morph and her Morph and Mars. You might disagree with that. So what kind of, so perhaps we should entirely look at the sun in terms of understanding Emmanuel Macron. So Emmanuel Macron is perhaps represented by the sun in Aries. I mean, he, I mean, he's not an Aries, but he has, he's quite, a, he's got a very fiery chart. That's true. And Sun is opposition Saturn. How might you see Sun opposition Saturn? You might see Sun opposition Saturn as is a man who marries an older woman. And she is the older woman herself. So that might be how um, Brigitte Macron's uh, Sun opposition Saturn is working. So she is, she's kind of projecting it onto him. And he has to behave in such a way like marrying an older woman. And she is the older woman herself. So I hope that makes some kind of sense. Now, staying on a French theme, there is Jordan Bardella. He is the uh, p politician of the... He's, he's a, obviously a French politician. He's leading light in the National Rally, which, of course, used to be the, the Front National. Um, and so... He is, uh, I suppose, of the right, although, of course, you know, when you talk about left wing, right wing, um, it's always so difficult because the the National Rally, a lot of their social policies are actually pretty left wing, um, but uh, they're seen as right wing, perhaps because they're seen as being socially conservative and uh, maybe and not being particularly enthusiastic about immig immigration and, and so forth. And... I, I hesitate to use the word far right because I think the trouble with the term far right is that it's been so widely used that the term far right has actually become fairly meaningless. So I think if one wants to, if one's tempted to describe someone as far right, one should be very clear about what one means. One should specify how this person is far right. I think just saying someone is far right, it, it, it. I don't think it's particularly useful. Maybe he is far right, maybe he's not far right, but I wouldn't want to um, say that he was far right because, as I said, I, I, I think it's just it's just a term that's become overused. But uh, Jordan Bardella has got Sun opposition Saturn, and I, I've looked at this Sun Saturn opposition before, and it's certainly a difficult aspect. Now, it may be an aspect that is potentially quite dictatorial. Sun, in, Sun opposition Saturn, one aspect of it wants to be in control. And if you use whole sign houses, then of course that Sun is going to be in the 10th house. Of course, it will be in the 9th house if you use Placidus. So with that Sun opposition Saturn, yeah, he wants to be in control. Uh, he wants to be in control of his party. And he's, he's, uh, he's, He's just about to be 29. I mean, he's not even 29 yet. He's 28, and he's already got a considerable amount of power in terms of French politics. So that may be how his son sat in opposition is working. I mean, I, I don't think one... I don't know. It'd be very interesting to look at his family background to see how that son opposition Saturn is working, whether, whether his father was a powerful role model, how his how his early background propelled him into this position where he has achieved a considerable amount of power at uh, a very young age. Now, that Sun opposition Saturn is he going to be triggered next year. He's got his Saturn return coming up next year. Saturn will be Saturn return, Saturn opposition, his son. Next year could be tough for him, but, uh, you know, we will we will have to see. And... Continuing on the theme of politics, uh, Olaf Scholz. I really don't want to spend long on Olaf Scholz, but just a reminder, Olaf Scholz has the Sun opposition Saturn, Sun um, in Gemini, Sun at 23 Gemini, opposition Saturn in Sagittarius. Um, I suppose he's Chancellor of Germany, whatever you think about him. He must have done something right to be Chancellor of Germany. He, he must have understood what he needed to do to get to a position of great power. I mean, of course, I understand that I, my understanding of it, that Olaf Scholz is perhaps not necessarily as powerful as most German chancellors. 
um, there seem to be a lot of other people around him who are exercising power. So he's not he's not uh, he's not exactly Adenauer or or Helmut Kohl or you know the uh, chancellors one remembers um, historically that had more sort of uh, gravitas. But uh, still, he must have done well with that to be become German Chancellor. And Sun Opposition Saturn, yeah, it may have helped. But like Jordan Bardet, next year, Saturn is going to be in late Virgo. Saturn will be square his son. Saturn will be... Squ- Sorry, Saturn will be in late Pisces. Saturn will be in late Pisces. Saturn will be square his sun. Saturn will be square Saturn. So he is going to be um, under under a bit of pressure there. Then uh, there's uh, Hans Christian Andersen has sun opposition Saturn. So Hans Christian Andersen is kind of interesting uh, because obviously he's... A famous writer of fairy stories, uh, the um, the sort of ugly duckling and the um, the mermaid, the, the was it the little mermaid or whatever, and he has sun opposition Saturn, and you know there are whole uh, you know, sort of I think almost books written about his his sexuality and his sexual frustrations and his there's a question but is he was he bisexual or was he asexual and he seemed to have um, perhaps have have sort of gay relationships maybe and somehow that seems to link with his son opposition saturn and it also sort of links with some of his fairy stories so you know the ugly duckling i mean i suppose if you want to exaggerate thing i i don't know but if you want to sort of look at it from a modern sort of perspective of um, looking at sort of i don't know gay writers or whatever i mean i i think one might exaggerate that but if one wanted to take perhaps a modern perspective you might say well the ugly duckling is about someone trying to find out who they are and i suppose you would say you would argue that the duckling would be um you know, the swan's egg that has been put in the wrong place or someone being in the wrong body, having the wrong sexuality and someone finally finding uh, finding out who they really are and being the swan. So I suppose if you were a transgender activist, for example, you would find the story of the... You'd, 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 you'd have a lot to say about the ugly duckling um, story, but... I'm not saying that's how one should read it, and likewise with the with the mermaid, you 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 have a mermaid who feels out of place. You know, she wants to be, um, you know, she, she wants to marry the prince, but she's a mermaid. She can't. She tries to marry the prince, but and her she go through some act of magic. She has her feet, but it really hurts her to dance, and so she can't find her place. And I think. You know, in the end, she she has she's given the opportunity to she marries the prince. She loses her mermaid status. She has the opportunity to rediscover that mermaid status. I think she has to kill the prince to do it, but she refuses. She jumps into the sea and then she becomes immortal, and it has a sort of happy ending in the end. But but still, there's a problem of place, and I think you know who you are and being in the wrong place, and. Maybe that says something about Hans Christian Andersen's chart, and he has his sun opposition Saturn, and you know, there's there's that sun in Aries. Okay, Saturn is in its um, exaltation, and and the sun is in its exaltation as well. But still, it is an opposition, and okay, he might have been able to work hard and produce these stories, but there is something quite uncomfortable, perhaps, about that sun opposition Saturn in his case. And maybe that is reflected in his fairy stories, or maybe that's just uh, just psychobabble. I don't know. Those are some thoughts about Scott Ritter. So, sorry, that's about Hans Christian Andersen. Scott Ritter being another person I wanted to talk about. Scott Ritter, former United Nations um, weapons inspector, and he has sun opposition Saturn. There is his sun 
at 22 Cancer and Saturn at 26 Capricorn. Um, I don't know a great deal about Scott Ritter. I mean, he he has had clearly a lot of frustrations in his life. You know, he 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 feels that you know he he saw he understood what was going on with Iraq, understanding that Iraq did not have weapons of mass destru- weapons of mass destruction, but he was ignored, and uh, he also had his own sort of criminal issues. I mean, he was um, arrested and for certain uh, sexual crimes. Uh, You know, I think that uh, something like uh, policemen masquerading as underage girls or something like that. And uh, so you, I don't know, I don't know about the details. I said, you can look it up. Um, And so that, that sort of tripped him up, sun opposition Saturn. Maybe it didn't help that perhaps the state was out to get him. I don't know. I mean, I said I don't know about the details, but clearly the sun opposition Saturn has uh, has meant that he, his ability to express himself in the way he wants to express himself has been uh, has certainly been a theme. I think part of the reason he said for his his what he was doing from you know, from a sexual perspective was. Uh, he was going for a period of depression. I think that's what he said. So Sun opposition Saturn could be that might might be what it's about. And so uh, the Sun opposition Saturn, he's also very persistent, and he, that can be Sun opposition Saturn. Sun opposition Saturn in Capricorn, and he is very stubborn and he's persistent in terms of his views about what America should be doing and what America shouldn't be doing, and particularly. America's involvement in Ukraine and the Middle East is something he has uh, been a vocal opponent of. Let me now look at uh, a one other person, which I think this is an important person. Um, in, not in terms of actually understanding Sun opposition Saturn. And this is the writer um, Upton Sinclair. Upton Sinclair. Now, I think that's a time of birth for him. Uh, I'm not saying for sure that is. So Upton Sinclair was a journalist and he wrote a book called The Jungle. And The Jungle was, it was a novel, but it was about the meatpacking industry. And I think it was published in 1906 and about the horrors of the meatpacking meat, 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 meat industry and how how appallingly workers were treated. And... Upton Sinclair was was a socialist, uh, and he died. He was born in 1878. He died in 1978 in um, uh, in 1968. I think he actually stood for governor of California as a Democrat in the 30s. And he came quite close to winning, but uh, his enemies put up loads of money, and he he, he failed. Uh, there was a real. Uh, um, campaign to um, slur him which which kind of worked very well I mean perhaps he could have he could have made it he could have made it to be governor of California and so when you look at his chart you maybe can see socialism in his chart and so you know he's got Saturn in Pisces but he's got a load of planets in Virgo he's got Venus Mercury Mars and the Sun and Uranus in Virgo and I think there is an association with Virgo and socialism because Virgo is if you like the working man it's it's the people that have to that do have to break their backs to make things work for everyone else and so it's it may not be um very imaginative this sign Virgo I mean he had his imagination he wrote a novel but apparently he didn't have a sense of humor and he was really focused on the struggle and workers rights and so and that is that is Virgo and so you could say that having sun and sun Mars conjunction in Virgo opposition Saturn you could you could link that with socialism, struggling for workers' rights. And I think that that does make sense. And it is a struggle. And there is that lack of humour there, I think. You know, it is a fairly humorless chart. <laughs> There's no air in that chart. 
but uh, you know that 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 does show a side of Saturn. It shows perhaps the Sun Saturn opposition, some of the negative sides of Sun Saturn opposition, but also the positive sides. You know, the cons- Virgo is about service, understanding other people's um, suffering, being able to feel that and being able to actually write about it and communicate it. So I think that uh, that really does work. And, you know, Upton Sinclair, by the way, is uh, his famous quotation, which I just think is such a good quotation. He said, it is difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends upon his not understanding it. So those are some people with Sun opposition Saturn. And let's just look at actually just a couple of deaths of Sun Saturn death, people dying on with the Sun Saturn um, opposition. So Abraham Lincoln died on a Sun Saturn opposition, or rather Abraham Lincoln was murdered on a Sun Saturn opposition. So there is uh, Abraham Lincoln's horoscope. He was supposedly born at dawn. And here's a chart of his assassination on the on the outer wheel. And so there was Sun opposition Saturn yeah, when he when he was shot. And I suppose you could say, well, in that case, Sun opposition Saturn. Sun is the leader. It is the president of the United States and sun opposition Saturn. That's him um, dying. Uh, dying Saturn is cutting it or cutting it off. And uh, so that's that was what was happening at the time he was assassinated. And this actually hits his moon. So uh, Abraham Lincoln's moon is at 27 Capricorn. So Saturn was square his moon and the sun was squ- also square his moon. So the sun Saturn opposition hit his moon. And, you know, that was uh, when he was uh, when he was assassinated. Now, if you happen to be a fan of Kamala Harris, then you will probably be excited to, to know that uh, <laughs> Kamala Harris, of course, is famous for having, astrologically is famous for being born on a full moon. And Kamala Harris, um, this is a distraction. I wasn't going to talk about it, but uh, let me just compare Kamala Harris's chart with, um, well, this is strange, isn't it? Because Kamala Harris's chart actually links with the assassination of um Abraham Lincoln. So let me just, I, I'm not, I don't know what this means. I'm just putting this up for, if you like, for fun. So, so here is Kamala Harris's chart, um, October the 20th, 1964. And if you compare Kamala Harris's chart with Abraham Lincoln's assassination, you can see that, you know, there is her exact full moon. So uh, the sun, the assassination sun is on Kamala Harris's moon and the assassination Saturn is exactly pretty much on her sun. So in a sense, that sun Saturn opposition at the time of Lincoln's assassination is kind of reflected in Kamala Harris, Harris's chart because it links with her, her full moon. What that means, I'm not going to speculate. So that's assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Now, another important death in America was the death of Marilyn Monroe. So Marilyn Monroe was died in August um, 1962. So what's interesting about Marilyn Monroe's chart, I mean, there are many things that are interesting about her chart. So she has Leo rising. And so she has uh, 13 Leo rising. And she's got black, true black moon Lilith rising as well. And here is the here's Marilyn Monroe's chart in the middle, and on the outer wheel we have um, on the outer wheel we have the positions of the planets when she died. I mean we don't know if exactly sure when she died, but there was a Moon Saturn opposition around that time. Sorry, there was a Sun Saturn opposition. There was a Sun at twelve Leo, Saturn at seven Aquarius. So Sun Saturn opposition was 
pretty close to her ascendant. So the sun was just creeping onto her ascendant. And so I think that that sun Saturn opposition was lining up across her ascendant. And as the sun crossed her ascendant, and as the sun crossed, started to move, started to cross her ascendant, started to move across her black moon Lilith. Um, that is indeed um, when she when she died. A final death is uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin. So Yevgeny Prigozhin. Uh, remember, he was the head of the Wagner force. You know, they did very well in Bakhmut helping to uh, uh, capture Bakhmut for the Russians. But then he went rogue and he sort of had this sort of rebellion against against Russia. There was, a, there was an opinion that, you know, perhaps he was supported by Ukraine. Perhaps he was just being a mercenary. Um, maybe he'd, someone had offered to pay him a lot of money to do this. And somehow he got away with it or appeared to get away with it. Then a few months later, he was in a plane and it just... Um, it crashed and no one knows why that plane crashed and who or rather who was responsible i mean some people say it was putin some people say uh, it could have been the ukrainians it could have been maybe it could have been the cia maybe the, maybe the cia paid him a load of money to betray the russians and he'd let them down and so they wanted to get him i mean who knows but the point is uh, he was killed in a plane crash so almost certainly murdered but we don't we don't really know who and so at the time of the plane crash you can see that there was a sun the sun was opposition saturn now i don't have his time of birth but you can see that the saturn was opposition his starting to be opposition his pluto and the sun was um conjunct his north node so you know he so transiting sun on his north node so he has his pluto conjunct north node in his horoscope remember pluto conjunct the north node tragic destiny of a large group of people i suppose he very much got wrapped up with that and yeah the sun was uh very close to his north node and when at the time of the acts at the time of the, his his killing and saturn was opposition the north was opposition the north node conjunct fairly close to the conjunction of his south node so uh that's Yevgeny Prigozhin, and that's all I'm going to say about Sun Opposition Saturn. And I hope you found this video of some interest. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I'd be very grateful if you were to like it. If you're not subscribed, I'd be very, very grateful if you were to subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. So thank you very much for listening, and I will talk to you again very soon.